welcome to Awake Ones. My name's Lorraine Flaherty. And my name is Alexandra Wenman. And today we thought we would talk to you about the topic of trust, because it's something that is absolutely essential in every single thing that you do, every single relationship that you have, and particularly with every experience that you have. There is nothing in life that can happen without trust as a foundation. And for so many people, it is such a challenge. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd share with you some of our experiences, good and bad, around trust and uh, see what insights we can come up with. So, Alexandra. <laughs> <laughs> God, there's so many, I mean, it's like a, a, a proverbial rabbit hole, this topic, but the first one that predominantly comes to my mind is in my role as a healer, having to hold a space of trust yeah. that whoever you're working with has the tools that they need to get through whatever it is that they're going through, because we, we often, and we have, I think, discussed this topic in other videos, of the topic of responsibility mm. and, and taking responsibility for ourselves and not expecting somebody to come and rescue us. But equally, you know, when you're a healer, it can be very difficult sometimes to negotiate that. You have to step back and trust that whatever that person's going through yeah. is part of their soul's journey. And while we're there to facilitate uh, and show them or, or, or help them find the tools that they need to get through any situation. You know, we absolutely cannot jump in and play the rescuer. So trust comes in to that in such a big way. But for me also I feel that healing is, especially when you're working with a healer, it's vital to a person's healing that you have faith and belief and trust that it actually works. Yeah, I find that the, the, the lens that the healer is looking at the world through can affect the healing. And so when you move into a, a divine space of unconditional love and trust, the best healing can then unfold. With, uh, with my Precious Wisdom healing system, it's a, it's a channeled energy system. And deliberately, I, you know, when, we're, when I'm working on a client or when I'm training people to work on a client, we don't focus on what's wrong with that person. Right. We hold a space of perfect divine unfoldment so it's almost like it's the energy of unconditional love but trust is key to it because what we're doing is we're seeing that person as already whole complete and divine in themselves yeah. and then what happens is it almost creates this beautiful alchemy or this neutral zone for the highest and best healing to unfold it sort of holds a, a space of neutrality so that everything can come into a harmonization so trust is really key in that because as yeah. humans if we're trying to project, you know, or if we focus on what's wrong, we can project into it and actually exacerbate a problem. And I was teaching the level three of this system on the weekend, just gone before we filmed. And I, and I have one of my students who, you know, he was saying, oh, I find it really difficult sometimes to hold that space and not um, feel pressure to give the person a message about what's going on or to have some information to share with them at the end of the healing. And I was able to say to him, well, that, that's wonderful that you can, you can recognize that because it's not actually in this particular system. It's not about giving a reading. It's not about telling the person what's wrong with them so they can fix it. It's just about being a pure channel of that divine energy. And right. that takes absolute trust. It's about trusting yourself, trusting the process, trusting the divine, and trusting that, you know, really... <laughs> And we, we, we struggle with this as humans. Yeah. Really, nothing happens that isn't meant to happen yeah. on some level. So trust is ultimate, really, in this, in this healing game. I've had so many different stories where it's been absolutely key and vital in me having faith and trust that a person can come through whatever it is they need to get through. And sometimes that takes stepping right out or stepping right back yeah. and, uh, and not intervening. Yeah. So how about you, honey? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the same thing. So obviously we work similarly but <laughs> differently. And it's that knowing that no matter what someone comes in presenting with, having absolute complete trust that the answer mm. for what they need mm. is already inside of them. Yeah. And I think that that is the, the one thing that 
I've held on to in doing this work, that sometimes people come in with a challenge or a problem and my logical brain says, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know what you, you know, how on earth do you resolve something like this of this magnitude? Because mm -hmm. sometimes the things that people come in with will be absolutely huge and the, the, the human mind cannot even comprehend how you could possibly mm -hmm. help or, or heal or, or change something like that. And yet there is that awareness, some part of me inside that thinks, well, I don't need to know the answer. Mm. I don't have to understand what the answer is. I just have to hold on to the fact that by holding a space, by asking the right questions, by directing somebody into the, the, the their inner space, that that answer will emerge, mm. that what they need is absolutely categorically there and the insight and understanding as you said, as to why these things have happened, because there will always be a reason mm. that gives me the absolute faith mm. and confidence in, in what's happening. And I think in 18 years now of officially doing it, there has never been a time mm. when, by holding that trust, that some answer, mm. that some aspect of uh, awareness or some understanding, some knowledge, that helps that person on their own healing journey hasn't come up. Mm. So trust is absolutely essential. I think also when we're on a personal level, there's been so much I've seen it for myself and I've seen it for clients and I've seen it for friends, that there are a lot of people going through really unique and uniquely bizarre situations in their life recently and it's almost like the universe is showing us that no two people and no two paths are identical or the same. And so even though you know, we've been kind of living in or conditioned to live in a, a, a world where we, we can't sympathise with somebody unless we've been through the same yeah. thing. This is kind of being smashed apart, I'm yeah. finding. And a lot of people are going through really unique challenges and, and processes and situations where they can't find the answers as to why it's happening. Mm. And there's this huge big question mark over it, but it's in many ways the eternal question mark that not knowing why means that you have to turn your attention inwards and you have to trust yourself and you have to trust that on some level there's a blessing in the situation and yeah. that you're going to come out n understanding more about yourself or you'll find the answers that you need eventually and you may never know why it happened to you but it's sort of in my experience it sort of drops you into a state of deeper compassion yeah. for what anyone else is going through because when you've had to face something totally alone or, or, or face whatever's going on for yourself in that in that sense that there isn't anyone that's been through the same situation or there isn't anyone that can sympathize or compare to you and there's no one there to offer you advice because it's like an anomaly there's all these anomalous situations popping up yeah. and um, this is where trust and trust in yourself and trust in whatever process you're going through is so key and it's vital and it is the in my experience that and hope are the two key healing components that go really really hand in hand and I've seen so many people when they've been through this it's like this breaking apart it's almost like a, 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 a kind of initiation of the self yeah. as we go through this higher consciousness evolution and people sometimes coming in and trying to help or trying to give answers can actually hinder yeah and I know that I've had this in my own experience and I had it again recently in a situation that's been ongoing where a friend of mine in Australia just with all the best and loving intentions tried to give me advice and the advice was just so far removed from what I needed and really fell short of where I was in my own process as well because I was at a certain level of consciousness and this person's coming from a different perspective, yeah. not necessarily a lower level of consciousness but just a, a different. different mindset and it actually served to disempower right. me in my own process. So I think that it's about trusting yourself and, and also allowing space to trust that other people kind of have the tools that they need to go through this. A lot of people are going through this 
this I've talked about it before the dark night of the soul the wilderness zone yeah um, this and many people are going through it in different ways some people go through it quickly some people it's a long drawn out process some people go through fits and starts of it I know Lorraine and I've both been through our own versions of it up and down um, and it can look like whatever it looks like it doesn't have to fit into a particular box or set of parameters but it is trust that will absolutely get you through it yeah. and and then when you see somebody going through it as well I think it's really vital because it's come up again for me really recently it's really vital that we do honor and trust and step back if you know because that running in to try and save somebody or to try and rescue somebody can actually disempower and, and hinder totally and I think that's really the hardest thing particularly when you are when you aware love somebody and when you well. love someone yeah. and when you particularly as a, a healer or a therapist when you see people around you that are struggling and that are going through a difficult time and you know that there are certain things that they could do that would really help them on the journey you know that there are techniques or processes things that they could do that would give them answers mm -hmm. or that might move them forward or that might help them move through their pain and the most difficult thing is not getting involved I think when you want to jump in and say oh well you could do this or you could do that mm -hmm. and I think both of us have had our fingers burnt over the years mm -hmm. where we've tried to step in and in that same way that sometimes our message or the information that we're giving may just not be what that person needs mm -hmm. right there in that moment in time and I've had to learn over the years and again it was something very wise that my therapist many years ago when I was doing psychosynthesis said to me and she just said look if it's not your job officially if it's not your job mm. then it's not your job mm. and it was more about you know her, her tone of voice and just the, the the message that suddenly really rocked in that if somebody doesn't ask you mm. for help if you are not employed in mm. some way like as a therapist you know it is my job actually it is our job to to open up a space for people to to heal so there's a effectively an official contract that we've engaged into mm -hmm. in that process but if somebody doesn't ask and you step in you have no right mm -hmm. whatsoever and that has been the biggest learning in in trust in my life and I know that in the moments where instead of trying to fix instead of trying to jump in instead of trying to give advice instead of trying to say what I think it is that that person needs to do when you drop into that trust that they are right where they need mm. to be, that they are going through exactly what they need to go through, and you trust that life or the universe or uh, whatever is going to provide them with those answers, and you just hold space and you love them unconditionally, and you honour their journey and whatever it is that they're going through, and you let them know that they are loved and that you're there, without providing any solutions, just holding that space. I mean, I've seen such magic happen mm. because when people feel like you believe in them, when you feel like, when they feel that you believe that they can do it, that they are enough and that you trust them to be able to take care of things, it kind of gives them permission to, to do it. So I've, seen so many people when I've stopped I stopped a long time ago but you know sometimes I still get tested but we all slide into it every now and then yeah, to catch ourselves yeah. don't we <laughs> but, but when I stop and I just do really go into that trust the irony is that so many times they go to that space that I would have suggested all by themselves mm -hmm. they find it it's it's funny how these things actually just suddenly <laughs> yeah. appear in their lives and I, I, I might get a phone call go do you think I should do this <laughs> oh my god well only if you think that that would be a good thing for you to do and and then I sit back and then I just have to laugh at the nature of the universe and the fact that you can trust that things will happen and it's hard and we mm -hmm. we have to remember that not all souls chose to come down here and have an easy ride. Sometimes souls have chosen to come in and, and suffer and have challenging experiences. Mm. And when you understand that that might be part of the soul's journey, then it means that everything is perfect. Mm. 
And once you drop into that space of just honouring, trusting, going, okay, well, I, I see what's happening and I'm just going to love it all and say thank you for it all, it makes a difference. And I think that applies to our own journeys as well. As Al said, we've both been through some fairly <laughs> interesting... Fun rides. Fun yeah. ride and some really <laughs> challenging stuff. And sometimes even I question, okay, why, what now? You know, why, why is this coming up now? And you just do have to remember to trust that it is all perfectly part of the journey. That doesn't mean that we sit back and just allow Mm. events or situations things that we're not comfortable with or things that we're not happy with to happen to us mm. that's absolutely not the case but whenever we're presented with challenges we do take responsibility mm. we trust that this has happened for a reason and then we both do the work yeah we both will go in and find the answers that we need so that we can move forward because mm. it's trusting your guidance too it's like if it is sometimes you if you're getting an urge to help somebody or be somewhere or do something and that urge is overwhelming you know if it's to do with a person always ask permission before you jump in but you know if it's a, a situation where you're guided to be somewhere we often have these amazing journeys i mean getting guided to go somewhere on a whim or we'll be headed to a place and it might be that we're you know we're driving somewhere and then it's like turn left <laughs> And we turn left and we end up finding a castle or something. And like we end up ha having these incredible experiences where it's going completely off piste. I mean, we, we were in California, we did Route 66. God, we got guided to the most incredible places. Oh, and this is something I haven't actually told her yet. So one of the, we were guided to this lake. We, we have t talked about this in another video, I think, but our GPS stopped working and we were, we were guided to this lake. The GPS actually took us off the route we were on and took us to this lake. And I recently found out that that particular lake in California has a pyramid in it. And we had no idea. How does it have a pyramid in it? I have to show you the picture. So to- uh, An ancient pyramid? Well, it's kind of in the rock, and I think we have a photo. We stopped the car and we took a photo in front of this oh. lake. You know that really turquoise yeah. uh, near Silverwood Lake? Yeah. I think it's near Silverwood Lake. So one of my recent clients had come over from America, come over from California, and she was telling me all about it, and she showed me the picture, and she showed me where it was on the map, and then she showed me a picture of the pyramid in it. It's in, cut into the rock, and I was just like, oh my God, we were right there. We stopped the car, we got out, and we took a picture. So we need to dig out the pyramid. I might need to yeah. dig out the picture. I don't know if it was in the exact spot where you can see the pyramid, but it was definitely that lake. And I had no idea. And see, she and I have a thing about pyramids. We always get guided to pyramids and weird stuff happens around pyramids. <laughs> I recently found out there's an amazing pyramid in Crete too that we have to go and see. Um, but yeah, so trusting that guidance. I mean, sometimes you get, you're get you trusting your guidance and you don't know why you've even trusted it until much later down the track. Yeah. So another thing in California... So I have this thing where faces appear in trees and in lights and in walls and things and randomly I'm taking about 150,000 photos everywhere we go. We're just driving through trees in California and something says, take a photo out the windscreen. So we take a photo out the windscreen. And it wasn't till three or four, three months later or something, I'm going through my pictures going, I better delete some photos. And I can't believe what I'm seeing. And I'm sitting in my living room, <laughs> I say to my husband, can you see the face in that tree? And like Tony's not, he is like us, but he doesn't know he's like us. And he's like, yeah, massive elf in the tree. Massive elf, big, the big ears, the pointy hat, the eyes, everything in this massive um, pine tree. So I just trusted that I needed to take a photo and followed that guidance and there was a big face and the same thing happened to us in France, as you might well know if you've seen the episodes about Brigon. <laughs> so <laughs> trust can take you all sorts of amazing places. We even got royal box seats at the opera once. We did, because we just trusted we just that everything trusted. was going to work out perfectly. And I have learned that the GPS guidance, so wherever we go, whatever route it is that we're supposed to be taking the G my gps definitely likes adventure and there <laughs> your will be gps times always takes you around the house it does so we'll be going on a straight route down a highway that's leading us directly to where it is that we're meant to go and it will literally say turn left 
And I, at the beginning, used to ignore it, and then random things would happen. But after a while, I learned that I should just trust it, because it would always take us where we needed to go, but via other places mm. that were even more important. And so when it happened in America on that trip, when suddenly we were supposed to be following yeah. just this straight highway and it took us off into the mountains. And there was a certain point where we looked at each other and said, we are going the wrong way. GPS has <laughs> taken us the wrong way. And then within moments, we both looked at each other and said, but we just have to trust it. Yeah. It might look like it's the wrong way, but clearly there is something here that we're meant to find. And Even when she's driven to my house in London, she goes, she goes, uh, and then she turns up at my house three hours after she's supposed to be there. We, I live in North London, she lives in South London already. And she gets to my house three hours later and goes, well, I don't know what was going on with my GPS, but I, I saw a castle. I had to go past a castle and then I went past some... There's always something... <laughs> something in law courts. And yeah. there was this whole maritime theme yeah. that when we started to explore the various different bits that I'd seen, it actually tapped into a piece of work that we were just about to do. And there were clues every step of the way. Every time I'd been alerted to a road name or road sign, it was, we put them together and it was the names of some of the, um, the names of the ships, it was mm. the names of some of the significant captains of the ships and it was all linked to a whole thread that we were following mm. about jailing and uh, yeah. even conquering of the world. The conquering of the yeah. world and the control of civilization mm. or people and, and people traveling. It, it went all the way back to kind of the origins of passports mm. and uh, border control. Border controls and things like that, mm. which will be another, another whole topic that yeah. we're going to be uh, looking at in a different time. So, yeah, the trust thing, I think. We all have an inner guidance, we all have an inner compass. But I think over the years, so many people, you you know, the gut instinct will, will kick in and then the mind will tell a story that mm. talks you out of following it. But there is a, a, an inner guidance and you can train it. You mm. can actually uh, work with it. I mean, there's some great exercises that we do yeah. about yeah. And the more you trust your trust, the more you strengthen it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Almost using your body as a, a, yeah. a compass to, to yeah. give you a yes or a no answers. Yeah. Uh, so dropping into that energy of trust, and probably the best way to go there is to think about somebody in your life mm. or an experience that you've already had where you had an instinct about something mm and it was proved to be mm. absolutely right. And if you go back and mm. rerun that memory mm. of what that felt like when you had some guidance and it proved to be absolutely true, then that's gonna help you to actually reconnect to what that feels like for you mm. or a person in your life that you really trust. If you think about that person and really go within and, mm. and think about what your body is, mm feeling you know if that feeling of trust had a color or if it had a feeling or where it is in your body if you start to recognize the signals mm -hmm. that you get with regards to trust then it's going to help you in other situations and equally you could think about times when you know maybe you trusted something and it, it didn't work so that you can get the feeling of what yeah. you know that not trusting yeah. or, or not being comfortable in it yeah. feels like the feeling is really huge and i think yeah uh, another little technique that you can do is we often we often are up here in our thinking mind and we literally locate our yeah. consciousness here but our consciousness is everywhere it, it, it's connected to all parts of us so what I do is I get people to imagine that they're dropping down from their head into their heart or even into their power center into their belly but the heart I think is a, the best compass yeah because um, our emotions are much clearer around the heart and feel into what feels right, what feels good, what feels loving, what feels easy, what feels aligned, what feels grace-filled, and follow that. Because often our logical mind will be like, well, you should go and get that job because it will pay you X, Y, and Z, and you can pay the bills, and then you can look after the kids, and you can do this and all of that. And it's like, well, it looks good on paper, but if it doesn't feel right, most of the time, if you go and do it, you'll end up being perhaps unhappy, or you know, it won't, be the right, it won't feel like the right thing because you haven't trusted that feeling of, you know, trusted that feeling, the positive feeling. Absolutely. Always follow that, that inner heart. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in a way, 
I hate to say it again because I'm sure I've used this line so many times, but because it is my favourite. I love you know, it. No, I need know to where say I'm it. going. We need to say it. <laughs> and again, bless it to my lovely therapist because this was another one that came from her. And it was that in life we have to trust in God. So for those of you that are Which is ourselves as well. Yeah. So we, we trust in the universe. So, you know, we have a dream or we have a vision. Mm -hmm. So we have to trust in things unfolding in the right way and, and you know, coming to us perfectly. But we do have to tie up our camels. <laughs> Meaning that you do have to take action, that you do have to get out there and make it happen, that you do have to look after what's yours, you do have to make preparations. You can't just trust that the universe is going to provide you with the, the, the best job and the best relationship and then sit on the, on the couch and actually not do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's that great, it's that, I mean, it's, you know, it's a parable, parable parable yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's used so many times when uh, the guy was caught in a flood yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And he said god come and help me come. save me yeah mm. so a helicopter arrives and he says no god's gonna save me and then a boat arrives and he says no god's gonna save me and then a canoe arrives and he says no god's gonna save me and then the water comes in and he drowns and he gets to heaven and God's like, I sent a helicopter, I sent a boat. And, says, and he has a go at God, you know, why didn't you save me? And God says, yeah, I, you know, I sent the boat, the helicopter and the canoe, what more do you want? Yeah. So when you're trusting the universe, do look for the signs mm -hmm. because there are messages everywhere. And yeah. you are the queen of finding messages in everything. God, everywhere. <laughs> On the side of buses, <laughs> billboards. The buses answer the questions I have in my head. <laughs> really, we are, the universe is talking to us all the time. All the time. Everything around us is a giant oracle. Yeah. If you learn to listen, if you learn to pay attention, everything is telling you, you know, but, you know, it, but, I find that it doesn't happen if you go looking for it. It only happens if you're trusting and then eventually you like, you know, you get those moments where you're like, what should I do about this? And then you happen to look up and then there's a sign right in your face going, just do it or whatever it is. Like, okay. It's like, if we listen to every billboard, we might be falling foul of the advertising people. So we don't want to just... <laughs> yeah, not the ones that say buy this. Yeah. Don't, don't listen you to those to ones. You have to still, it, it, you'll know it when it's a, a true sign from the universe. Like animal signs, like bees coming into your life and, you know, telling you that you know it's all about overcoming the impossible and the nectar of life there's all sorts of animal totems and messages and symbols everywhere I just love it it's symbolism but I want to add in those other sage words of advice that Lorraine always uses she wheels these out a lot but I, they have come to be one of my mantras as well and it's a very very well-known Irish saying that's what's for you will never pass you by. Absolutely. So if any of you are going through a period of struggle or if you're doubting yourselves or if there's something that you feel is meant to happen, because one of the things that, that I noticed has kept happening for me and for a lot of my friends and clients as well, is that all those signs are there, but the things that the signs are pointing to are not actually dropping into place, but you feel like you're being guided towards something and it's not manifesting. If you if you think about that phrase, what's for you will never pass you by, then whatever it is that you are trying to find or that you're trying to get to, for some reason you haven't got there yet, then you're learning something from it. Or it's, or it's showing you something more. There's something more to be unraveled in your journey. There's always a lesson or a blessing. But trust in those words because if you do, then it just, things seem to unfold really beautifully. Like I, I always think, it's like a rose billowing out. It's like, oh. And it's time, it might be the right time, yep. it might be the right place, the right person, the right situation. Also, I think our higher self waits for us to catch up. We might not be consciously aware of what we're actually meant to be doing. Yep. And then one day the penny drops and that's we right. go, oh, that's what I meant. That would be the perfect thing. And then the next day the door opens and the offer drops in your lap or whatever it's meant to be then comes in. So, yeah. So, and leaps of faith as well. Mm. But again, you know, with leaps of faith, you do have to make sure that you have a backup mm. plan. Um, yeah, practical. We need to balance the logical and the uh, the the uh, feminine, masculine and feminine sides of the brain. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got to we've got to look after ourselves as well. Yeah, it has to be about balance. So, learning to trust 
you, trust the universe, trust that others are where they are supposed to be. Mm. I think that's, that's probably the toughest one, mm. I think. Mm. Yeah, Especially when we look out and we see all the difficulties that having on a global people scale. are having in the world. Yeah. yeah, I mean, trust in the higher, better plan, trust in the light, trust in love, <laughs> trust in the universe. I'm not going to go into the song. I'm about to from start singing. I don't know what I'm saying. I was just about to go to the jungle knowing book. Knowing me, knowing you. Ah, oh my God. I don't Embarrassing. Know. I think on that note, yeah. <laughs> we might wrap up. <laughs> and, I'm, and, and, I'm not, and I'm not going to go to the jungle book, although I'm so tempted. I don't know what the copyright is, but I'm, I can just see that snake going, trust in me, trust in me. <laughs> don't do that. I'm not going to do the big round. Don't do whirly eyes. Yeah. eyes. No, yeah. no whirly eyes. Mm. No, she doesn't this time. Not hers. <laughs> Anybody right. that does worry <laughs> eyes at you and tells you to trust in them, don't. <laughs> run away, <laughs> run away. Yeah. And that is the other thing about trusting other people. Don't, you know, yes, trust the universe. Yes, trust yourself. But with regards to trusting everyone that's out there, have a healthy sense of caution, because not everybody, mm. unfortunately, we, we would love to believe that everybody had everybody's best interests at trust heart. Trust yourself first. But they don't, so... We're not saying go out and trust everyone and everything. Have a healthy sense of caution. Mm. And if something doesn't feel right, and if something feels like it's too good to be true, mm. then it usually is. So It's healthy to question as well. Do mm. question, do question. Mm. And if you're not sure, do get advice. So we also, we, we trust our pendulums. That mm. is our ability to tap into higher guidance. And so we work with those, but even still, sometimes even though we have a great trust in that, higher self first. Yeah. Yeah. You're but inner. sometimes, if we're still not sure, then we we get reinforcement or backup mm -hmm. from other people. So, if there are situations where you are in doubt or you feel like you need help, do ask. Because if you ask for help, then it's okay for people to give it to you. So yeah. again, if you're not sure in life, then ask yeah. because. There will always be somebody that's been through similar things. It might be a different content, but... Or ask the universe, because the universe can send you help. Yeah, well. and also that comes back to asking for help from not only your guides, mm. but your guardian angels, because mm. we know that they can't help unless you ask them. Mm. So, again, you can, you can trust in that, but uh, don't, be, don't be afraid to ask for help sometimes if you need it. Mm. I love it. Love it, will you help me? No, I'm joking. <laughs> help me! No, I'm joking. Anyway, we're getting really doolally now. So if, I think it's the heat. We're in the middle of a London heat wave. But we trust that the summer's going to last even yeah. longer and be even more fabulous. So, but anyway, on that note, while I'm rambling, <laughs> just to say, I trust you. I trust you. And, and we trust and we you. Trust you. <laughs> and uh, thank you for trusting in us. And thank you for watching Awake Ones. Thank you for thank watching. You.